Hi everybody! So I know it's been a while since I've made a video. Um, this month of August and the end of July, it's been an insane month. I'm so sad to see it go. It's the best month of every year for me. It's a crazy month in my household because it's my birthday, my husband's birthday, my husband's birthday, and then our anniversary. And I also flew in his little brother to surprise him for his birthday, and he was here for seven days. And so I have just been very distracted with my life and having a great time. So. I'm sorry I haven't been on YouTube for a while, but at the same time, I'm not sorry because I've had so much fun. Okay, so I'm just gonna get right into it. I am not wearing foundation today because I am going to be doing a foundation tutorial for you guys. I have gotten so many requests for months for a foundation tutorial, my skincare routine, and highlighting and contouring. So I thought, you know what? You guys are my subscribers and you guys wanna see this, so what am I doing not giving it to you? So here I am, I'm gonna show you what it is that you've been asking for. I'm sorry that it's taking me so stinking long. Okay, so first off before I demonstrate how I achieve a flawless face, please. Okay, I'm going to just give you some recommendations of my personal favorite foundations that I would recommend to you guys who have different skin um, types than I do. First of all, I want to say that I am not like a MAC snob. I know that it can definitely come across as that because I use so many MAC products in my videos, but I'm not. I'm not a MAC snob at all. It's just I had a lot of access to them. I got a lot of MAC products for free and at a great discount when I was working for the company for a while. So that is why I have so many products. But like, I'm not a MAC snob. See, I have drugstore right here, right here in front of me. Okay, so I just want to put that out there because I know that I would be like, come on girl, like why do you only use MAC? Like get over yourself. But anyways, so with that being said, I just want to say that one of my, two of my favorite foundations are from the drugstore and they are L'Oreal True Match. It's L'Oreal True Match the original and then L'Oreal True Match Lumi. And I just want to recommend these because they are gorgeous and this summer I have been wearing the Lumi very often, basically every day, because I know that like on camera I look like I like get all dolled up every day. No, you have got it so wrong. I only do like a full face of makeup, like I do my tutorials probably twice a week. Other days, I apply this foundation with my fingers just all over my face and just like a touch of concealer. And I mean, I literally do my foundation, my entire face of makeup in like five or six minutes. And a lot of days I don't even wear makeup because I really like my skin to breathe, which I will get into in my skincare video. Oh my gosh. I'm getting like red right here. When I talk really fast, they're like, Ugh. I get red patches on my chest. Is that weird? Like, I think that's just me. It's weird. Anyways, but this is gonna give you a very dewy finish. So I recommend it for dry skin or skin that's dull in any way. If you're oily, you can definitely use it, but I would have to set it with something. Something. L'Oreal True Match is different. The first, the original one. This one is going to be for more oily skin tone and combination. Did I say skin tone? Skin type. And um, combination skin because this one isn't a super dewy one and this one has great lasting power and the color range is amazing. There's like, I think over 20 different colors at the drugstore, which is great for drugstore. Then, Makeup Forever HD Foundation, which I'm sure you have heard this. Um, I mean, it's a very, very popular foundation. It's beautiful, there's really not much to say about it. It's a great foundation, it has no SPF in it and that's why it is HD, high definition, because when you have an SPF in your foundation or under your foundation, you're gonna get white face and flash. So if you wanna avoid that, you wanna go with something with no SPF, which brings me to Max Face and Body. Max Face and Body Foundation is used on a lot of sets with cameras and bright lights, like, um, news anchors and celebrities that are doing photo shoots. It is a very thin, it is like 90% water I believe, or like 85% water. So it's basically like a tinted moisturizer. It is waterproof, sweat proof, and literally like you can jump into a pool and go like this and your makeup's not gonna move, it's insane. Um, but yeah, great colors, it's a great foundation, but you're gonna need to set it with a powder, otherwise you are going to look very, um, like sweaty in a way. It definitely makes you look extremely dewy. Just for concealers very quickly, I personally, my favorite concealers come from MAC. Just I have tried so many different concealers and I have never found any, no matter how expensive they are, that I love as much as MAC. I have tried Drugstore, I have tried Dior, I have tried Laura Mercier, and MAC is just, they have the best concealers to me. I love their coverage and I love that they're not really thick and most of them don't settle on my lines. So anyway, something that I really want to touch base on because I see this a lot on YouTube and it drives me crazy just because a lot of people are getting false information. There are a lot of people who use concealers like MAC Studio Finish Concealer and MAC Studio Sculpt Concealer which as you can see are in pots. This one looks like an eyeshadow and this is the Studio Finish. 
and then this looks like Painterly Paint Pot, and this is Studio Sculpt. Now, these two concealers are not for the eye area. They are not for around here. I see so many girls on YouTube using these for their under eye area, saying like, oh yeah, I love this, but it settles in my little fine lines under there, and like it's really thick, and every couple hours I have to touch up, and it's like, no, it's not for your under eye area. Ones like this are for the under eye area. Okay, like sticks. So I just wanna touch on that very quickly so that, that is why it's caking up. They are very thick consistency. They are made for the skin. They are made for breakouts and unevenness and red patches. They are not made to have to handle and stand against these little lines that we all have under our eyes. So I just wanna let you know, try to stay away from that. If you are looking for something more full coverage, then use a concealer and then go over it with a powder. Don't go out and get a thick, thick concealer because it's gonna make you look like dusty and dirty and no, I'm just against any thick products on the skin because we want the skin to look natural and glowing and pretty, not like glue. So now I am just going to jump into my foundation routine. This is not, I just said that wrong. This is not my foundation routine at all. I'm going to show you what I do when I'm going out to achieve like a flawless face foundation routine because my foundation routine is super, super simple. Um, and this is simple as well. But I'm going to show you just a few things to do just to help you get a good looking flawless face night on the town whatever you want to do um, more full con full coverage foundation routine now I can't even talk to you and I'm so sorry about the Sun like beaming in my face as you can see I've just been like lounging around the house all day hanging out with John and now it's like he's gone and I'm all alone so I always record at like 7 o'clock at night okay so I am going to be using the makeup forever HD foundation today this is like my go-to foundation when I want more full coverage and what I do is I pump it on the back of my hand like that just like a whole pump and then I take the Sigma flat top kabuki brush what is this called flat top synthetic kabuki the F80 this line of brushes from Sigma is the most amazing line in the world if you don't know what Sigma brushes is they are just as good as Mac they're the exact same thing as Mac sorry Mac but they are and they are online only at Sigma beauty.com I believe and you cannot go wrong with these brushes so what I do is I take my foundation brush and I stipple it in there and then I kind of like push it like this because I want it to get into the brush because that's gonna give you more of a natural look now I'm just gonna take it and start moving it around my face and as you can see you can probably barely even see it but that's what I'm going for because I like to build my foundation I don't want to just like throw it on there and have tons of thick foundation. Now, um, you may have noticed that I didn't use a primer and that is on purpose. I do not believe in primers. I, um, I think the primers are just, more than anything, a gimmick. Now, I put like a little bit more on there and I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side of my face. Um, unless you have special needs in your skin and you know, you're getting a really good primer that promises to do certain things like fill in lines and stuff. I just think that the basic primers out there like Max Primer and Stila's Primer and Benefits Primer and Smashbox's Primer, I don't see anything that it does for me at all. Um, basically, before you put on your foundation, you need something on your skin. You can't go on with a dry face because you will see imperfections and you will see lines and your foundation will settle and stuff like that, but that's because you have a dry, a dry face. You need to put on a moisturizer before, and if you put on a moisturizer, even if it's, I haven't put on a moisturizer for like, like three hours and I'm putting on my foundation and it's gonna look good all night long. You just need something on your skin that your foundation can stick to, and that's basically the only point of a primer. So I just, sorry about my rant, I just don't really believe in primers all that much. Okay, so I'm putting this, and right now I don't have like any really irritating breakouts. If I did, I would go in with the Studio Finish Concealer right here, like I'll show you. I would go in after my foundation, like I have a little guy tempting me right there in this concealer. It's so thick that, like if you can see how thick that is, putting a barely any on, it doesn't even look like it's my skin color because it's so stinking thick. I cannot believe it. So yeah, you don't want to put that under your eye area. And I go around my lips not over them because this foundation is not going to act for a primer. Um, a lot of people think that if you put foundation on your lips, it will make your lip color like last longer. It's not true. Go get yourself a lip primer if you want 
your lip color to last longer because the foundation is just gonna make it cake up and crease all over your lips and you're gonna get that like white line in there. <laughs> now that I have on the base of foundation, you can see what my skin looks like. Am I way too close for comfort? I have like whiteness around my eyes. But you can see it still looks like skin. Like there's my little freckle, you can still see that. And yes, it looks like skin. It doesn't look like cake face because the foundation itself, I like to keep it sheer. Um, I put on my eyebrows, my I filled them in already, but just for the purpose of the video, since I do that after my foundation, I just wanted to mention if you go over your eyebrows with your foundation, it's okay. If you do that and then fill them in, that will actually help the color that you put on your eyebrows stick and make your eyebrows last longer. <laughs> I'm like talking so fast and trying to get in so much information so quickly, I'm sorry. Okay, so now that I have that on, I'm going to go in with my concealer. I'm going to do a white highlight underneath the eyes just to show you guys because it is very in right now and if you do it right it can be done very beautifully. So I'm going to take NW25 and a select cover up concealer and I'm going to put a little bit of that on the back of my hand. Now once again this is like a sheer concealer so a little goes a long way. So I'm going to put that much on the back of my hand and then I'm going to take NW20 and I will not come close to using all of this on both of my eyes and I'm putting that there. And then I'm just gonna take any brush. Woo, sorry. Where's my concealer brush? Okay, so I'm gonna take my concealer brush and I'm just gonna move this product around like this and just mix it together. Can you even see that? <laughs> like going on the screen. Okay, so we have like a little whirlpool of color there. And then I don't want that much of my brush, so I'm just gonna rub it off like that. So you can see the color now on the back of my hand. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that, like sparingly, and thin it out because I don't want that much on my brush. And now I'm going to start in the inner corner of my eye right here. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to start in the inner corner right here and drag it down beside my nose. And because this is sheer, I'm filling in the V that we're making. If this was a very thick concealer, I would just go like this and then like this and I would just work with that and make it work. But because this is a sheer concealer, I'm bringing it all the way in and filling in this V. Okay, so we want to bring it down right here on the side of the nose. You don't want to neglect this area. This is important. And I will explain more as to why it's important in my highlighting and contouring video. Now I'm going to take my finger, <laughs> sorry. I'm going to take my finger and make sure it's clean. I always have um, like Purell or something to sanitize my hands right next, but it dries me out so bad, so I try not to use it. Just make sure your finger is clean and it's the best if it's warm. And I just take it and dab it in. Um, you can also use a sponge for this. I don't think that brushes do the job because like I was saying, I like my under eye concealer to be sheer and blended in. And I think that the finger does this better than any makeup tool out there. Sorry, it's like hard to talk and apply makeup at the same time even when you're doing something like foolproof like this. Okay. So as you can see, it is blended in that quickly and it still does not look fake. Obviously it looks a lot different than this side and better than this side, but it doesn't look like, oh God, you have too much makeup on. Okay, so same thing here, going down side the nose, bringing it up. Like as you can see, there's, I'm not like precise with this at all. Um, I do get up under the eye pretty closely and the reason that being is because this is going to act as a primer for eye product that I may put underneath my eye. So I make sure to get up in there really good because after this video I will finish my makeup. If you're curious, the makeup that I'm wearing is basically the exact same from my neutral eye, neutral smoky eye for prom, whatever, my prom tutorial, it's the same as that. This is the makeup that I wear, like the colors that I wear every day in my life. Um, I take the product, just sheerly, not that much, and I just push it in this area up to my brow. Because you don't want that inner corner to be left out and be discolored or have anything weird going on in there. Don't neglect it and see that'll bring like more popping to my eyes. Now you can see what I'm talking about. 
but see I didn't go in with a color that's so light that you can't blend it in because a lot of times I've got like tons of stuff left over but a lot of times I'll see girls go in with a color that is too light and too pink for their skin tone and they'll have like this line right here that's like impossible to blend and it can be really frustrating so make sure if you want to do this whole highlighted thing under your eye area that you do it right and I am using a color that has a pink undertone yes um, but it's not super super light it's lighter than my skin but only by like a shade or two don't go like six or seven shades lighter than your skin because it's gonna start to look really weird um okay so now that we have that, once again, if you have anything else that you want to conceal, you can go ahead and do that before you powder. Um, like a lot of people conceal like around their noses because women hormonally get really red right there. Um, you can't escape it if you are a woman. And then around the mouth a lot of times. And then me personally, I know this is weird, but I have a problem area between my eyebrows. I get redness right there. Does anybody else have that? Like, am I the only one? I don't know why. For some reason, like my foundation separates between my eyebrows and redness pokes out sometimes. It's not okay. Okay. Oh, and I've had a problem on my chin for like literally a month. Like this guy keeps coming back over and over and over on my chin. I'm like, leave me alone. Okay, so I'll wipe this off the back of my hand. Now, me personally, I do not powder my entire face because I am dry, so I do not need to powder my entire face. If I were to powder my face, I would use a translucent powder. Um, I have Max Prep and Prime translucent powder, so that's what I would use, but once again, I've worked with many translucent powders, and I don't think that there's one that's like way better than the other. But what I am going to do is set my under eye concealer because we don't want that to move. I've heard a lot of people say that they don't set their under eye concealer because they think that it makes their eye, like their um, concealer crease more. I have never heard that in my life. When I was trained, I was trained to set under eye concealer and I've always done it and it's never, my under eye concealer creases if I don't. You can set it with a mineral powder, you can set it with a translucent powder, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna set it with this mineral powder. Um, this is my favorite way to do it. I don't do it often though, only maybe once a week, once every other week, because if I use this every day under my eyes, it irritates me. It never used to, but all of a sudden my skin started irritating me. I am just dabbing it. This brush is no longer made by MAC. Kind of stinks, I know, but any brush will do. I've just used this brush for years, and I pat. I do not rub, because if you rub, you are going to move all of that work that you just did around your face. So I pat, and I'm patting in the exact same areas that we worked in, and Make sure you get right here in this area where that concealer and the foundation meets. I know it looks like I'm powdering like crazy, but I'm really not. I just go over it like a lot because I want to soak up like the moisture of the concealer that I put on there and make sure I really get it because I don't want any of that area to be wet or sticky because I want it to stay in place. And just doing foundation and leaving it at that, I do recommend doing a little bronzing or some blush, or if you wanna do like the whole highlighting, contouring, blush, and whole thing, you can, but I recommend doing something, otherwise you'll look very flat and there won't be much dimension on your face. Um, as you can see, it's not like a really thick base of foundation. Um, it definitely gives like that flawless look to the skin, but it's not like overbearing and cakey, and for people who don't like a lot of foundation, they're not gonna be like, oh, this is awful. And the Makeup Forever foundation I use does have a very beautiful, like, velvety, buttery feel to the skin. So I recommend it very much. Um, so yeah, that is it. If you want another video sometime in the future about me showing a more, like, intense foundation routine, something that celebrities would do, or like a Kim Kardashian face routine, which is a very full coverage and a lot of product. I can do that for you, but I didn't want to jump in and teach you how to do clown face first. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video.